Um, great, shall we get started as we wait for the last few people to, to join us? Yeah. Lovely. Um, so hi everyone, thank you so so much for joining us. My name is Amy. Some of you might know me already, but if you don't know me, I work up in Merseyside, so I work with the um, Girls Network in the, on the Wirral and in Liverpool. Um, and we're joined as well by Krishna, who also works for the Girls Network in London, and by Angela, who's been, going to be delivering the workshop today. Before we get started, I just wanted to say a massive, massive thank you to everybody for participating. We are so happy to have you here today and we're so excited to pass um, this over to Angela in a minute um, for an amazing presentation that she's prepared for us all, uh, which I'm sure we'll all enjoy and really looking forward to it. There will be a chance for you to give us some feedback, which we will send you, um, so do keep an eye um, out for, for that to, to come your way. We want to create a professional and safe space for you during this workshop, which is why we've turned everybody's cameras off as well as your microphones. Um, so we'll just keep them switched off throughout the call. But we also want you to be able to participate throughout it and to be able to ask any questions you might have or give any comments or any ideas as we go along, if anything comes up. Um, so you can use the chat for that. I know some of you have already used it, which is great. Um, just to note, when you type in the chat, you can select who it goes to. So um, Angela might say, send it to me, in which case make sure it says to Angela. But if not, if you can just send it to the Girls Network and then I can ask the question for you so that everybody can hear it. We won't read out your names when we ask the questions, so it will just be so that everybody can hear the different questions. Um, if you have any questions or concerns during the workshop, you can send me or Krishna a message um, and we'll be able to support you and, direct you direct and uh, respond to you directly. And if at any point your you know, internet goes or the call drops, just go back to the email, click on the link again, and you'll be accepted back in. Um, so don't worry about that if it happens, just join again and, and we'll accept you. So I'm now really excited to be welcoming Angela. Um, she is the head of culture at The Very Group, and she's a mentor with the Girls Network. And today she's going to share her own journey with confidence and some tips and techniques that she's learned to become the confident woman that she is today. So without further ado, I'll pass over to Angela. Thanks, Amy. Hi, everyone. Um, good afternoon. This is very strange to be presenting to, um, to a blank screen at the moment. So I'm going to try and imagine that right now we're in a bit of a room together and that can feel all your energy and that you're all going to be nodding along in agreement with me and give me lots of nice friendly vibes um, to help my confidence throughout this presentation. Um, but there are there is going to be um, a little bit of um, sharing that I ask you to do. Um, so as Amy said, please do um, contribute to that because it'll just be really helpful for me to kind of know that you're still in the room with me. So, um, so yeah, so hi everyone. As Amy said, I am Angela Spencer and my current role is Head of Culture at The Very Group. So we're an online retailer. Hopefully most of you have heard of us before. Um, but I thought I would just start by telling you a bit about my career um, because it's always quite interesting to kind of see where people have got to where they've ended up. Um, so I actually um, graduated from Salford University in 2006 with a degree in fashion and I was all set for my career in buying and that's what took me to the very group. So my big dreams of being a buyer and um, after 18 months in an entry level role I finally got to work in buying and I did that for four years. A um, couple of interesting um, areas that I was a buyer in. So um, I was a buyer in lingerie and I was also a buyer in ladies sportswear. So two very different areas um, to get your experience in. But I loved it. I loved buying. Um, but there is one thing about buying and that's that um, it does become quite repetitive in that it's quite seasonal. So after four years in buying, I felt like um, I kind of learned everything I wanted to learn in that area. And I made the decision to move into a different area of the business, which was licensing. So at the time, we licensed a children's wear brand called Ladybird. 
and I got the opportunity to travel to some incredible places like India, Dubai and Malaysia as part of that role which again was fantastic in another four years I spent doing that um, and then after four years um, I started to notice that the company wasn't really investing in the area of the business that I was working in and this is just a little tip for any of, any of you who are watching now thinking about your careers if you end up in a big company like I found myself in um, what is really good to look for is what your CEO is talking about when they stand up in front of the organization and speak because if you work in the area that they are talking about, then you're in a good place. And what happened with me was that I was finding that all the conversations about strategy were moving away from licensing. Um, but what was being discussed a lot was customer. So I thought, right, I'm gonna take a leap and I'm gonna move into customer. And I worked on customer experience engagement. So my role then was to engage the business on who our customer was and why customer experience was really important to us back then and continues to be so. So through customer experience engagement, I realized that I loved communicating with people. So from there, I then moved into um, internal communications. And from internal communications, I then moved into a HR transformation role. And from HR transformation, I then found myself as head of culture. Um, I thought it's just interesting to show that, you know, um, careers are not always linear. You know, they take a lot of different paths. Um, and that kind of explains um, what I've been doing for the last 14 years and how I've ended up where I am. Um, as head of culture, I get the opportunity to learn and understand about what really motivates people, um, what conditions they thrive in, um, and what what basically enables people to be the best version of themselves and that is a big driver for me i just want people to be happy in their jobs and that's why um through this current role i've now got the opportunity to coach and mentor individuals and i absolutely love it of all of the things that i've done in the 14 years it's the thing that lights me up the most and i'm so happy to have found it and that's why i'm really proud um, mentor at the girls network as well and really love everything that they stand for so that's me a little bit about me and what motivates me um, i'm now going to move on um, amy can you just give me a thumbs up that that's moved on for everyone yeah perfect so let's now talk about the subject about what we're going to be covering today and that is career confidence um, and the reason why i'm like really excited to talk to you about this is because um, I'm going to be really honest and tell you that um, confidence is something that has not always come naturally to me and over the last couple of years I've learned a lot about self-confidence and I've learned that low self-confidence isn't a life sentence that you have to carry around with you. Confidence is actually a skill and it's a skill that can be learned, mastered um, and practiced throughout your life as you grow. Now, I wish that I could go back and tell myself all this at 14, but I can't. So um, I'm going to hopefully share some of my wisdom with you today. And I'm hoping that it's something that you'll think about as you guys take the next steps in the next few years. And hopefully throughout your career, maybe you'll remember that, um, that woman with the pink lipstick that talked to you one day about confidence. So... Um, I'm, I'm 38 and it's taken me a long time to learn this so if you're not a confident person I want you to know that that's okay um, because I've been there. Um, uh, lack of confidence and self-doubt has been a theme in my life and I am going to share a bit more about my story throughout the presentation um, with you and as I said I'm going to ask you to do some sharing with me as well because I never lose the opportunity when I'm with other girls or women to be inspired and I know that um, that you'll probably have some little nuggets for me that I can add to my um, to my to my takings away from this session so let's talk about confidence um, and what we're going to cover today is first of all I'm going to talk to you about communicating with confidence and the things that I have learned um, that enable me to present and communicate um, at my best. 
I'm then going to talk to you about this idea of faking it till you make it. So um, it's probably a theme, uh, a phrase that you've heard a lot around, you know, if you don't have confidence, you can fake it and then you'll build it. Um, and I've just got a little bit of a warning around that that I want to talk to you about. And then I'm going to talk to you about building self-belief and some of the things that I've done and that I'm continuing to do in order to do that for myself. And then we're going to end the session um, and that's where I'm going to get inspired by you, hopefully, um, with a discussion. And that discussion is going to be around um, what's in your confidence backpack. So you'll hear more about that as we go on. Okay, so let's talk about um, communicating with confidence first of all. I've got a picture of the incredible um, Michelle Obama there. And um, for anybody who has not read Becoming by Michelle Obama, I would highly recommend it for your summer reading. She, for me, is someone that embodies um, confidence. And I'm blown away when I see how she presents herself um, with confidence. But actually, when you read her book and you read her story, you realise how she's become that incredible, confident um, woman. And it's just very, very inspiring. So it's a bit of a shout out to Michelle there, who we love. Um, OK, so in my career, I have presented um, terribly. I have presented averagely and I've presented brilliantly. And... I have discovered that there are three things that need to be in place in order for me to present brilliantly. And the first one is, it needs to be my own words. There have been many times throughout my career where I have been asked to recite something um, or to say something on behalf of someone else. And it never works. It absolutely never lands in the way that I want it to because one, I can never remember it. If it's not something that I would automatically say myself, it will not stay in here. So whenever you're presenting, I would recommend that you make the words your own because you're more likely to remember it and you're more likely to be able to remember it if you go off course as well, which does quite, ho quite often happen when you're presenting. Um, the second thing is that I really need to believe in a subject. And again, I've had times in my career where I've not conf confidently been able to challenge people when they have expected me to um, present certain messages. I am certainly at a point now in my career where I never present anything that I don't believe in. Um, and I've realised that you know there are ways in which I can negotiate the words or negotiate the subject matter to make it authentic to what I believe in as well, which again is really helpful. And then the final thing and this girls is the hardest thing is that I need to believe in myself and we all have good days um, and we all have bad days when we just don't feel it but there are some little um, things that I've managed to pick up that um, can help me even on a day when I'm not feeling at my best to deliver um, the best presentation I can on that day so they're my three things that I need in order to present confidently and the thing about presenting and communicating is that it's not just about standing up with a PowerPoint presentation. Um, sometimes it's just important to remember that you are always presenting yourself to the world, whether it be um, how you enter a room, whether it be um, how you hold a conversation in a coffee queue when you're waiting to be served, how you communicate with the person that serves you that coffee, all of these times, if your confidence and your self-belief is at its highest, you are opening yourself up to meeting someone incredible, having a great conversation, you're um, presenting the best version of yourself. So a really important message that I'll continue to say throughout this is that um, you know, don't, fa don't fail to work on your confidence throughout your um, career. It's not just about the moments when you're standing up and doing a presentation, it's about all the moments in between as well. Okay, so I said that we were gonna talk about faking it. Um, so fake it till you make it. This is a, you hear this all the time, and you know, for some people it really works as well. Um, I kind of understand it, but I do think it comes with caution. So um, 
Lady Gaga actually was quoted as saying, confidence is, is everything, and if you don't have it, fake it. And it's not very often that I disagree with Lady Gaga, but I have some cautious words for Lady Gaga because I don't like the idea that faking confidence will make you confident because for me it's really important that you focus on how you feel on the inside and then that will naturally portray what you see on the outside. Working on the outside first is only going to make you um, go further away from how you feel on the inside. So there are little things that you might want to do that will um, make you feel more confident and in a way that is faking it, you know, whether it be the outfit that you wear or the shoes that you wear or how you enter a room. Um, but I think the real magic works when that self-belief is there on the inside. Um, and also, I, I don't like know how we define making it. You know, if we're faking it all the time, how, how can we actually say that we're making it? So making it for me is when true self-confidence and self-belief shines from the inside out. So I say don't fake it, build it. Um, and here are some of the ways in which I think that you can authentically build confidence. The first thing is um, believing in yourself and knowing your own strengths. So you are probably at an age now where you're really starting to think about what you want to do in the future. And that involves taking a good look at what your strengths are um, and what you love doing as well. So it's not just about the things that you're good at. You know, if you want to make a career out of something, you've got to love doing it as well. And you've got to really believe in your ability to do that. And I'm sure that you have a lot of outside influences right now, whether it be parents or teachers or friends. As much as you can spend really going into yourself and thinking about what are you good at? You know, what makes you unique as you are and what lights you up? What are those things that are really that you're going to follow throughout your career? And what your strengths are now versus what your strengths are by the time you're my age is just going to quadruple and then some. So you're going to be building strengths throughout your life. And every time you do that, I think you need to honor and accept and enjoy that you're growing as, as a person. And one of the ways that you should do that is by not being afraid to fail. Failure is something that can really impact our confidence. We've all had those moments where things haven't gone the way we wanted them to, and we feel shame and embarrassment. If you, if you flip your mindset on failure, that it's an opportunity to grow rather than an opportunity um, to step back, then that's what's really going to help you. So every moment in which um, you learn something, write it down, but write it down from a positive point of view. Don't um, put it, I've done this before, don't put it to the back of your head and think, I'm just going to pretend that never happened because that was so embarrassing and I cannot believe that that's just happened. Write it down and think, right, what's happened? What mistake did I make? How did it fail? And what have I learned from that? And that's how you really grow through failure and making mistakes because you will make mistakes. I've made loads. Um, you know, we all make mistakes. It's part of life. And then the third point that I want to make is about spending more time in the real world. Um, and we're in a really strange time, especially at the moment, um, where a lot of our communication is done digitally but this is a point really around social media and I love social media um, I'm an Instagram junkie um, but the thing about social media is that sometimes we can portray the life that we want to have and the um, image that we want to put across a little bit too far away from the life that we have and the image that we do have as well my advice to you is that you try and make those things not too far apart because the more, um, the more fake version of yourself that you sell online or, or, or in a social space, then the more distance you become from who you really are. And that's where that can really diminish your confidence. A perfect example of this is that if you get up in the morning and you, you know, take a picture of yourself and you filter every single thing about it and then you put it on Instagram and then you go out and you're in the street and you bump into someone, who you might be linked with on Instagram and you're not feeling like that picture, 
what you're probably going to do is put your head down and try and walk past them as quick as possible. Now, if you feel as confident as what you're portraying on your social media, then you're more likely to stop, have a conversation, build a connection. And that's when you're really um, going to start to feel that confidence from, from the inside. So I know it's really tempting to filter the hell out of our lives. But I think the more time you can spend in the real world, the better. And that comes from everything, from conversations with your friends. It's really hard at the moment, but the more time that you can spend face to face, the better when it comes to confidence. And then this final thing, which is something that ugh, I've been so guilty of. And, um, you know, I, I challenge myself on it all the time now is um, not to hide behind other things. So when I think about myself in school, I had um, lots of popular friends and in my mind I was popular through association and I now realize that that was ridiculous because those friends are still my friends now um, and they like me for the value that I bring to their life so I don't know why I thought that back then um, but I did um, and I've had times when I've not really felt that confident in social situations and therefore I've let my um, brilliant and charismatic husband take the lead on conversation and, and I've, I found myself to physically shrink away and let him do the chatting. And again, the message I'm reinforcing to myself there is that he's better than me, so I'll just let him lead the conversation, which is wrong. You know, um, we, we've all got a part to play in each of those conversations. So I've definitely hidden behind um, my great husband before. Um, and... The other thing that um, might resonate with a lot of you is I'm a people pleaser. So I have certainly throughout my career hidden behind being nice and working hard. And being nice and working hard is really important. Um, and I don't discourage anybody from, from being that person. But I think that if you, um, if you do that from a, from a place of self-worth and knowing um, the value that you bring, that you'll be even more successful. So they're my ways of building uh, confidence. Um, and now I feel like I've done a lot of sharing, okay? I'm going to do a bit more in a minute. So before I do, um, I'm just going to do a little bit of a, um, a poll to you guys. So I'm really interested to know how you're all feeling when it comes to your confidence right now. So I'm going to ask you to participate in the chat by telling us how you're feeling between a zero and a ten. So zero is rock bottom, no confidence at all. And ten is you are smashing life. You are up there with Beyonce in terms of your confidence levels. So um, I'm going to give you a little minute. I'm going to have a think myself about where I am today on this. And then we'll have a little bit of a chat. I can't actually see the chat, so Amy might have to help me out. No, Krishna. Amy, what are you getting? Sorry, um, I've had a few, so I can read out some of the ones that I've had so far. If you've sent it to Angela, if you want to just send it to me and I can read out the number as well. So I've had a four, a six, a seven, uh, five, another five, they're still coming through, another five, a seven, an eight, a ten. Wow. So I think we've got a wide, wide range of, um, of feelings in terms of confidence. That's brilliant. And I'm so pleased that there's a ten out there. That's absolutely amazing. It's actually Beyonce's on the call. Just, uh, oh, brilliant. He quite often dials in to hear me speak. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing um and you know when i when i do this presentation i tend to get a lot of people around the middle which is quite normal um and 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 as i said before we all have days when we feel different things um today i am going to say about an eight and a half 
which is pretty good. Um, and I'm now going to kind of talk a little bit about how I found myself last year at a two. Um, and all and then we can talk about the work that I've been doing on myself to get myself from a two up to an eight and a half. Um, and I certainly have plans by the end of this year to be a 10. Um, so, so let's go into that. Um, so I talked about faking it till you make it and um, this idea that, you know, a lack of confidence um, will catch up with you and it certainly caught up with me. So this is kind of like my personal story and this is where I get like, quite vulnerable, start to feel a bit awkward. But um, this is the story that I like to tell because I just want people to know that you might have times in your career where your confidence is challenged, um, but that doesn't mean that your career needs to stop at that point. It just means that it's a wake up call to you that you need to take control of the situation and that you need to start to do something in order to get your number back up. Um, so for me, it starts where you are now, back in secondary school, um, and I always had good reports. Um, as I say, I'm a people pleaser and I work hard, so I did all right. Um, but I would started to see a bit of a common theme that was coming through, and that was things like um, Angela would benefit from a bit more self belief. Um, Angela could do so much more if she had a little bit more confidence. With a little bit more confidence, Ange could X. And it was coming up again and again. Um, but one of the things that no one ever told me was that there was actually something I could do about that. So from a really young age, I just accepted that confidence was something that you were either born with or you weren't. And as far as I was concerned, I wasn't born with it. So um, I, I worked hard um, and I went to university and I started a career, as I said, and I was successful um, throughout my career, continuing to um, take upward steps, continuing to get pay rises and doing really well. And one of the things that frustrates me now was that for many years, I put that down to the fact that, um, that I was a people pleaser and I thought, you know, I'm not actually that good, but I think people just like me. So, you know, that's why I got the job. And, you know, I look back now and it just, it just drives me mad because obviously people don't just get jobs because um, they're nice. Um, people, no one gives anyone a job unless they're capable of doing it. <laughs> but I just never quite had that self-belief um, that I do now. And this really manifested for me um, after the birth of my second daughter. And um, for anyone that does um, go on to have children in their life, it's certainly um, a time in a woman's life where you should be conscious of your feelings and your confidence. Um, as a mother, I've been very confident. I've, I've um, been really confident in terms of how I've carried and delivered my babies, and I've had really good maternity leaves, which not a lot of women do. Um, but my confidence came when it when it came to going back to work. That's where it became an issue. So um, when I was on maternity leave after my second daughter Leah was born, um, I started to have conversations about what my return was going to look like. And that's when I got the great news that I was going to be coming back as head of culture. And it was like, wow, that is just like my perfect role. You know, if I could have picked a role back then, that would have been it. And I, I was like, I can't believe that they're going to give this to me. I, I don't know why, but, you know, if they believe in me, then surely I can make it work. This is going to be brilliant. So I came back as head of culture. And um, it was a tough time in that, you know, I had two young children, one in nursery, one in school, both um, picking up every bug that you could possibly think of. So I was constantly back and forth between work and home with sick children, being up all night, not having any sleep, um, you know, difficult time. And that coinciding with the fact that this was my first real leadership role. Um, because I'd always been part of a team that was feeding into somebody else, you know, and I was a real collaborative person. I loved being part of a team and, and having my own contribution. But suddenly it wasn't about my contribution. It was about my delivery and it was all on me. And that's when my lack of confidence really showed up. 
because you've got to be confident in order to be a leader. And when it wasn't there, little, little things started to become really, really difficult. And I'm talking about simple things like putting together an email, you know, I'd sit there and I'd get anxious about sending an email. I'd get anxious about going and having a conversation with somebody over their desk. It became um, really quite consuming. And then it reached, um, it reached a point for me when I was, um, I'd had a terrible morning with, with the kids, getting the kids to school and um, I was late for work. Um, and I was driving to, I was driving on the motorway and I was going to um, meet my then boss at the time. And um, I remember reaching literally a crossroads and I could have turned left to go into Starbucks or I could have gone straight on to go to work. And I just had this voice just coming over and over in my head, just telling me that I was out of my depth and that, um, that I couldn't do it. And this voice just continued and continued. And I was literally at these lights and I put my indicator on and my plan was get to Starbucks. It's a good plan, isn't it? But it'd be a good plan right now. Uh, get to Starbucks. And then um, I was going to phone work and I was going to tell them that I couldn't come in because I wasn't well. I didn't really know what I was going to say, but I was going to make something up. And I don't really know what I would have done after that, but I imagine that I probably would have gone home. And I probably would have found it really difficult to go back to work. And that's when I was, I say I was at a two. I could have been at a one. And the reason I don't think I was at a one was because I took my indicator off and I drove to work. And thank God I did. <laughs> because I really, as I say, I really don't know what I'd have done that day if I'd just gone home and got into bed. But there was just something in me. And I think it was the difference between a one and a two that just made me take that indicator off and drive into work. And it was hard. Um, I was late for a meeting, um, you know, which I was very apologetic for. I had a tough day, but I got through it and then I went home. And that was the point when I realized that I needed to do something about it. So at this point, we were four weeks away from um, a huge project in work that I'd been leading, which was around the rebrand from what was formerly shot direct to the very group. And it involved me standing up in front of 3000 people and taking them through a presentation about the work that we've done. And I was just like, I have worked so hard this year. Yet I cannot not do that presentation. Like I fully, you know, I fully deserve to be doing that presentation. So then that's where I started on my journey of building my own self-confidence and my own self-belief. And um, I am happy to say that I did do the presentation three weeks later um, and I stood up and I was probably about a nine in terms of my confidence. So that just shows how quickly if you put in the work and the effort and you get yourself into the right mindset, you can turn that around. Um, and it worries me a lot when I think about what might have happened if I'd have gone into Starbucks that day, but I didn't. So let me talk to you about how I turned it around. That's a picture of me actually, um, and quite nicely, I'm wearing a t-shirt that says, be true to you, but that was just a bit of a coincidence, I think, maybe subconsciously, it was something that I chose. But um, I'm actually at a women's circle there where we, um, we did some intention setting. Um, but yeah, that's why I put that picture in there. Um, it's just really like, it was a, it was a really nice day. So um, I started with doing my research. Um, like anything that you want to get better at, you've got to do your research um, and you've got, to, you, you've got to put the time and the effort in. So I read books about confidence. I listened to podcasts. I discovered um, the amazing researcher, Brene Brown, whose books literally changed my life. Um, and um, from Brene, I then went on to read books by amazing women like um, Elizabeth Gilbert. And yeah, I just, I just immersed myself in that world of self-belief. And the second thing is that I didn't do it on my own. So I was inspired by others. As I said, I attended things like women's circles events and intention setting workshops. And I surrounded myself by people who wanted to be like you know, people who embodied the confidence that I was missing and through their energy, that's where I start to build my own. 
I made myself a priority and that's not easy when you've got two children um, but it was definitely something that I was lacking that um, that time to myself to do things just for me is really really important so now every day I make a commitment that I do something for myself and it might be that I well I don't right now but it might be that I went to the gym before we you know before, when we could go to the gym or that I just went for a walk or I just had a bath or I just spent a half an hour journaling or just doing something that was just about me and not other people. Um, I mentioned intentions and this has been a game changer for me. So I set intentions on a regular basis now. I set them monthly, um, what, you know, the kind of bigger intentions that I want to go after, but I can also um, set them on a daily basis as well just before I go into the office or just before something like this, I'll sit and have a little moment with myself and I'll set an intention for how I want things to go and what I want the outcome to be. Um, be grateful. So um, with every little bit of growth that I experience when it comes to my own self-belief and my confidence, I take the time to be grateful for that. Um, I tend now to focus not on what I don't have, but what I do have, because I believe the more that you focus on abundance, the more abundant your life becomes. Um, this is another one that's great, and that's just digest compliments. How often do we get told something nice about ourselves and we go, oh, oh it's embarrassing. Or we, or, or we like overcompensate by saying, you know, someone says you've got a nice dress and you say, oh, it's old, or oh, I've got it for 50p on eBay. You know, we can't help ourselves by not actually taking that compliment in um, so a good thing that I now do is if someone says a really nice compliment to me I'll actually write it down in a notebook and then when I'm having a bad day I'll go back and I'll read those compliments back to myself and remind myself that people have said those things about me um, so they're just some of the things that I have been doing and continue to do um, and I can honestly say that um, putting myself first and believing in myself has completely changed how happy I feel and it's completely changed how I show up at work, how I show up at home, how I show up in social situations. It's the best thing I ever did and I wish I'd have done it years ago. Um, so one of the ways in which um, I like to imagine all these little things that I've learned is that I carry them around with me in a backpack. So um, this is where hopefully we can have a little discussion. Keep checking the time. We can have a little discussion about this. Um, and I love this picture because it not only is it a backpack, but it's a Wonder Woman backpack. So it's perfect. Um, I want you to imagine that now and throughout the rest of your career, you're always going to have with you an imaginary backpack on your back. And every time you find something that makes you feel more confident or makes you believe in yourself, whatever it is, you're going to take that thing and you're going to put it in your backpack so that when you have those moments of self-doubt, um, when you have those moments, you might have a moment like I did when you're in your car and you're not sure which way to go, that you can reach into that backpack and you can bring yourself back up from the one or a two right up to the other end of the scale. Um, so I'll, I'll give you a couple of things that I put in my backpack. I know it's hard to have a discussion on these things, but if you can have a little think and then maybe add it into the chat. Um, so I mentioned Brene Brown and other inspirational women that I put in my backpack and think about all the time. The one that I'm reading at the moment actually is um, Alicia Keys book, um, More Myself. And she went on an amazing journey of um, self-discovery and realising who her most authentic version is. So she's she's in the backpack now, she's cool. Um, crystals, so I'm actually wearing a crystal right now, which is a rose quartz crystal, and you can believe in crystals or not, like, you know, I, I, you, you can judge me and think I'm, I'm crazy, but what I really like about crystals and wearing crystals is it's about the intention setting. So quite often if I've got a big event coming up, I'll buy myself a new crystal, um, and you can look into crystals and see like what type of energy that they're going to give you. So if I'm going to do a talk, then I will pick a crystal that I know is going to help me to lose confidence and self-belief. 
um, and I'll wear that crystal um, and, I'll, and I'll think about what I want it to do for me in that situation and occasion. Um, quotes, I love a good quote. It's not hard to find a good quote, is it? But like my Instagram now is basically just, just people that lift me up and inspire me. Um, and I get loads of quotes off that and I just sometimes I just like screenshot them and I save them but the, I've actually got some notes here and I did this presentation for the first time um, earlier this year for the um, University of Liverpool and I've still got me um, my cards my cue my cards and they've got little quotes on the back of them as well like little inspirational quotes so I like a good quote I mentioned intention setting um, and that's really important for me because it's about having the time for myself to actually focus on what I want. Sometimes we get a little bit lost thinking about how we, how we want other people to see us and what other people want us to do. But by setting your own intention, you're really focusing on what you want to get out of each situation. Um, another one that is a bit, is a bit strange um, but really works quite well is mirror work. And this has helped me when I've been feeling um, quite, quite down on my confidence. And that's where you literally just, you just look at yourself in the mirror, but you just focus on one eye. So you're not looking at your face and thinking, oh, I wish to do my makeup better or I've got a spot or I'm doing this. You're just focusing on one eye and you just tell yourself something, tell yourself something nice or tell yourself something that you want to happen that day. Um, and you just take time just looking um, so mirror work is another one that's um, that's really worked for me. So I don't know if anybody shared anything. Have you got anything that you can add that I could start to um, put in my backpack? I don't know. So if people will start sending them out now. Um, so if you could just send it to the girls' network and then I'll read it out. Um, I have a few to share as well, Angela. So the ones while people send theirs. Um, Someone once told me that the colour red actually feels makes you feel more comfortable. So if I'm ever going to a meeting that I'm a bit nervous about, I try to wear something red um, and it just gives me that boost. Um, and I think similar to what you said about writing down compliments, I've also got like a folder with nice emails and if I ever receive one, I put it in there. Um, and I also use the power pose. So the, if I'm ever going to a meeting and they're stretching yourself out and making yourself um, bigger so that you can feel confidence as well. So I think those help me um so girls if you want to pop yours into the chat and we can read I received it. an interesting a really good one um so one girl said that um in her backpack she keeps a notebook for doodling um and being able to kind of put all her worries into into that notebook as well and um music in in general just supporting self-belief as well which I thought was really great. Yes, I love that one. And Spotify as well. It's um, my daughters are obsessed with this um, this playlist on Spotify. I think it's called Women's Empowerment, um, and it's brilliant because every time we get in the car, we've got it on, and my husband's like rolling. <laughs> it's got some great tunes in there. Um, I've got friendship bracelets as well, so that reminder of friendship. Nice. Oh, I love that. Yeah. I guess some, some relaxing things as well that keeps your mind sort of calm as well. So things that you kind of, I guess, I guess baking comes into that shortbread person, wherever you are. Oh yeah. I'll put some of that in my backpack. No problem. <laughs> Definitely. I like the idea actually of, of the, of the notebook. Um, journaling. Oh, it, it's been brilliant as well for me. Um, I've, um, I worked with a life coach actually at the start of the year and that's one of the things that she taught me is that before you emotionally react to any situation just write it all down first and you almost like you get your emotion out first into your journal and then you think a little bit more logically about how you might want to react to a situation mm -hmm. so that's a really good one. So we've got someone who said the thought that everything is for the best helps me to find confidence as you said Angela every failure is experience so that's what helps me. Um, got someone who says headphones and snacks help them in their confidence. Um, someone says that certain books or poetry helps them with their confidence. Um, I like to make sure my room is clean, tidy and spacious before I sleep. A clear surrounding helps me have a clear head. Mm. Really good tip. I, I think we can all apply that. Um, someone says anything green relaxes me and gives me energy. 
Oh, nice. Lovely. It's a really colour thing, actually. It's come up a couple of times, hasn't it? It's not one I've actually thought about. Yeah, these are all really good. Um, I think on the one as well that you said about compliments and how we kind of brush them away. I was once speaking to a body language expert and she said when someone gives us a compliment, we, our body kind of reacts negatively. So we tend to do, oh, no, it's nothing. And you push the compliment away. And she said to instead, like, kind of be like, oh, thank you. And, and take that compliment in. And I think just that that tells your body that it's OK to accept it. And I thought that was really interesting just to hear about the impact. Of, of body language on yourself and, and your belief on what people are telling you. Yeah. Great. If there's any more, you can keep sending them to us. Um, but these are all really helpful. I really like them all. Well, Amy, and, uh, I guess to add to that one around body language, um, I know that you've seen the, there's a, a TED talk that talks about how your uh, your body language and, and how you kind of, you know, as, as Amy did with her arms up, keeping her arms up, that releases uh, certain chemicals in your body that make you feel good about yourself. So it's scientifically proven also. Um, we've got, got one more. Uh, we've got at times when I feel I'm losing an uh, at an important project or challenge, I ask myself what my model um, would do at that time. And I would just deal with it and do the job. Um, so I think thinking of role models is really helpful and having those positive role models, as you said, Angela, and just, people that we can look up to and think, what would they do? Um, yeah. Point. Um, supportive network of people as well. So people around you, I guess, friends, family, teachers. Oh, that's lovely. I love that. Thank you. Thanks everyone. I'm definitely going to uh, look up the TED Talks on the Power Pose actually. It's one I've not done for a while. Um, <clears throat> so, um, so that's, that's, that's my presentation and I just wanted to say thank you. And that, you know, hope that you go all go and find your tens. Um, and I just wanted to, I suppose, um, re-say something that I said earlier in the presentation. And that's that, you know, you're at a time in your life when <clears throat> you'll no doubt be thinking about your grades and you'll be thinking about, eventually you'll be thinking about what your CV looks like, what your LinkedIn profile is going to look like. Um, how you're going to present yourself in interviews and all these kind of things and I just want you to remember that working on your confidence and your self-belief is the best thing that you can do for your careers um, I wish I'd have known that like I say back when I did but I didn't um, and just that you know every single one of us deserves to be a 10 when it comes to confidence and um, and you know, 10 is basically the point in which you are the best version of yourself and that's where you fulfill your full potential in life. And I think you'll all agree that the world definitely needs um, more women to be a 10 and fulfill their, more, their full potential in life. So please go forward and find your 10s. And thank you so much for listening to me. It's been really lovely. Thank you, Angela, so, so much for that. It was brilliant. I really enjoyed it. And I think I took away quite a lot of nuggets of, of wisdom from that presentation. Um, I think one of the things that I'd never even thought about was around the social media, because I always thought it was what other people posted that influenced my, com impacted my confidence. But when you said, actually, what we post also impacts our confidence, that's really interesting. And I think something for me even to think about going forward. So thank you so, so much for that. It was so interesting. Um, we've got a bit of time. So if anyone has any questions that you would like to post in the chat or any comments or anything that you would like to share, um, please feel free to, we can read it out and Angela can, can respond to that question. Um, yeah. While we wait to see if there's any questions. What was the book that you said that would, you'd recommend people read? Was it... At, the the Farmer becoming, yeah, okay. that's great. Has oh, it's one of my favourites. Um, girls, I'm just going to share the um share the link to the the talk about body language and and how that um how that helps you. Is a lady, but uh, a lady called Amy Cuddy who who does it. It's a really famous TED talk. Um, so I've just posted that in the chat. Uh, if anyone wants to watch it at any point, um, I found that really really useful. Um, Angela, I've written down so many points that you just shared, actually, honestly, it was absolutely brilliant. Um, I really like the, the part about um, confidence being all, all the bits in between. And um, I think, you know, I've, I've um, 
always I find so many people think of confidence as just being able to present do a presentation to a, a group of people and if they if they struggle or feel nervous giving a presentation they assume that they aren't confident um, but it is all those other things as well in between that you know if you if you're confident to go and say hello to someone new like that is confident a different type of confidence and I really like that a lot absolutely some of your best networking happens in the coffee queue and work so yeah um I've, I've received a question actually um why why do you think that boys have um greater confidence confidence than girls mm, um it's a good question and i interestingly actually um i um i live with uh, with a guy who who also sometimes struggles with with his own confidence and um, so i think it's definitely fair to say that it's not just a girl thing um but i do feel that we have a lot more pressures from a societal point of view and um, one of the things that i didn't mention in the chat but that i have mentioned when i when i do this presentation before is um things like the the expectation on us to look and act a certain way so um you know, I actually don't have many regrets about my wedding day. It was the best day of my life. One of the best days of my life. Sorry, I forgot about two children since. Um, but you know, one of the things that I really regret is that I did what a lot of wives do and that I went two dress sizes smaller. And um, that is um, something that I see all the time from women when it comes to hiding behind things. And it really saddens me that, you know, why do we think that to be worthy of being a bride, we've got to be two sizes smaller than what we are on a normal average day. Um, but there are pressures like that all the time. That's a small example. Um, but I think that we start to absorb those pressures from a really young age as girls. Um, and they continue to be there. There's, all, there's almost something about the shame of getting things wrong as well, which seems to impact us more. Um, those embarrassing moments feel a lot bigger, tend to feel a lot bigger for girls at school. And once you fail and once you do something and you feel embarrassed, quite often that can have a really big impact on your confidence. So I think it's a lot of tiny little things um, that add up, but it is definitely worth saying that there are some guys out there that struggle with confidence, you know, and I feel for them. I'm always trying to cheerleader my husband i'm like come on you can do this he's brilliant um so i think it's there for a lot of people not just girls but yeah for me sadly it's the um it's the outside influences and the expectations thanks angela that's really interesting um there's quite a lot of i think talks on this as well on just why why girls um i did watch one and i, I, I can't remember the name but i can try to send it and it was it did an experiment with um how parents responded to young children doing something dangerous so it was climbing a tree and how with boys it was just like that's fine but with girls it was like be careful don't fall um and how that actually then impacted that girls felt like they had to be very careful and not take risks and then i think not taking risks can then impact your confidence and have that knock-on effect so um it, it's very interesting but of course it's true that it can happen to to anybody but that's that yeah it's so Great to hear more, more views on that. Thanks, Angela. We've got another question um, on any tips on how to boost my confidence at the last minute before giving a public presentation when I feel like I can't speak and I want to run away. Good question. Good question. I want I, to know too. <laughs> I, I think actually you've, you've jogged my memory about that present, about that TED Talks, and that's a really good one, a dead quick one. You take yourself into, um, into a toilet cubicle and do your your power pose um but i think it's that's where i would also i would always go into my backpack like what's the really quick thing that i can just tell myself and the, the thing that i tend to tell myself before any presentation is that you know just tell yourself that you're going to enjoy it and it's going to be an experience because it always is an experience whether it goes well or whether it goes it doesn't go well it's always an experience so i think if you just tell yourself that you're going in to have a good time, you're going to have a good experience, you're going to learn from it. Whether it goes well or not, it doesn't really matter. Um, because I think when you take away almost that level of anxiety around the situation and just breathe 
and breathing is is really important it sounds quite obvious but just slow breaths as you just tell yourself I'm looking forward to this it's going to be a good experience and I'm going to learn from it whatever happens then um when it finishes no matter what the outcome yeah you've done it now and you've learned from it and you can move forward but I think if you tell yourself that you do deep breaths before you go into the situation you'll be surprised that the difference that can make but definitely that power pose as well that's a really good one that was a great question um i have uh, another one actually here um what what's what's intention setting um could you tell us a bit oh more? sorry yeah so, um a bit more detail around um intention setting is that this is where um you spend some time really thinking about what it is that you want so whether it be out of a situation or out of um, your life or out of the next couple of weeks um, just spend a little bit of time with yourself uh, with pen and paper and think about what matters most to you what it is that you want to achieve and write it down and by writing something down you're creating a goal for yourself you're making an intention you're not just thinking in your head oh that'd be nice you know if uh, if uh, if i was a ceo um of a of a global company that'd be nice wouldn't it but if you actually write that down and if you actually set that intention i will be the ceo of a global company it's a great example isn't it um then that then becomes an intention in your mind that you're moving towards as opposed to just a thought that you've had so we have thoughts all the time but are we actually intending to act on those thoughts so for me the minute i write something down i'm making a promise to myself that it's going to happen um a really simple example of this is that sometimes before going to work which doesn't happen at the moment because i'm not going into work but i will get my phone and i'll check my calendar for the day before i even go into the office so i have a little look at the calendar and i'll see what meetings i've got and then i'll set an intention for the day so i might say right i've got three stakeholder meetings today so my intention today is to um, bring all my stakeholders on board and to leave the office at the end of the day having um, had some brilliant conversations and opening up my network to enable me to achieve x y and z and it's just about telling yourself something out loud and then making it happen and um, so yeah that's intention setting for me thanks angela that's a great explanation and i think there is something really powerful about writing it down and and then it's something that, yeah, it's a promise you've made to yourself and something that you can reach. And I think um, for people on the call, it might be around the job you want one day, about what you want to have one day, uh, what you want to study. It can be anything, but setting that, writing it down is very powerful because it's like a promise. Um, so, so we've got someone that said, um, I think just some lovely feedback. It's nice to know that there isn't a time limit on perfecting your confidence as long as you keep working on it. Um, which is great. And we've got one more question before um, we'll officially close, but then if there's more, we can always uh, maybe hold back a couple of minutes. Um, but someone said, and it's a really, really great question. How do you seek confidence when such a large part of confidence, I feel, is from how you look and whether you fit the ideal model? Mm, yeah, I think that that's where, I think it was one of the first points in my build and self-confidence is, you need to get really close to understanding what is unique about you because there'll be so many things that are, are unique about us. And by doing that, we might also have to let go of some of the things that aren't true about us. Um, nobody is gonna um, look or always look or act a certain way. Um, so I think this is about where you really get to know yourself. So this is where you can write down these are the unique these are the things that are completely unique to me um, and they might not be unique in that no one else has them so let's say that you're really good at presenting then 10 other people in your class might be really good at presenting but then the more gifts that you write down the more things that are unique about you then the package that is you becomes completely different completely new and there's no one else out there like you so the more that you accept yourself through um, 
through giving yourself the um, the time and the focus and the energy to to grow and to become the person that you want to become. Um, the more time you are validating who you are as an individual and who you are as a person and what makes you unique, you unique. Um, and that's where you start to, I suppose, find your place in the world because there is a place in the world for everyone um, and there is a path for everyone and it isn't all about looking like a Victoria's Secrets model and being the CEO and driving a Land Rover Evoke. You know, we've all got different things that the universe will send to us at different times and we just need to believe in ourselves and believe in the part that we play. So I think the best thing that you can do is really sort of get to know yourself and explore yourself and be confident in what you've got and let go of what you haven't. Thank you. That's a really, really helpful answer. Um, great. So it's officially five o'clock. So we're going to officially wrap this up. Um, I just want to say a massive thank you to everybody. So to everyone that attended, everyone that asked questions, um, they were all so insightful. And then to Angela for, for being so open about your own story as well, um, for, for sharing all those tips and, and for just answering those questions so well and giving us such practical tips, that tip, so many practical tips that we can take away and put into practice immediately. So thank you so much. Um, I don't think we've got any other questions. Krishna, have you got any others? No, I think it. Uh, I think we're all done. And thank you to uh, whoever the hero is who sent me the um, shortbread recipe. <laughs> Very much appreciated. Lovely. Oh, it's great. I love these activities where people share different skills. Um, so yeah, thank you all so, so much for that. I hope you can all take something away after this and put it into practice and, and we can all become more confident. And I think it, you know, it can happen to everybody and we can all work on it. I think that's the, one of my key things is that it's something that we can all improve and we can all become more confident if that's what we want. So we just have to work on it. So thank you so much, Angela, um, for coming today. So um, that was just to add, sorry, one second. Um, just to add, if uh, if you do see any more invites for workshops, please do sign up uh, and please encourage uh, anyone on your cohort as well to sign up. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a lovely rest of the day and I'll see you at another workshop soon. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Bye. Thank you so much, Angela. Um, Is that all right? Was that what we wanted? <laughs> yeah, wait, we'll just finish the call. And um, there's a couple of people. Oh. Angela, that was awesome. I honestly have written down so much. It was really, really good. It was so great. Whenever I do this, I, I remember things and like, oh yeah, I've not done that for a while. <laughs> so helpful. I've written, I took loads of notes. So if I wasn't looking, it was just me writing on everything you were saying. Um, I'll actually...